Hey, what's up there, Digital Surfers? Today we're going to be doing uh, something a little bit more exciting than usual, and by that I mean we're going to be going over uh, how a turbocharger works on your car. But before I show you the turbocharging and all its different components on the car, let's go quickly over this little graph I made of uh, on uh, how the whole system operates. Alright, so here's our uh, turbocharger on this graph. As you can see, this tur turbocharger has a wheel or turbine on the exhaust side. This is going to be part of your exhaust manifold sometimes or in your, you know, connected through your exhaust pipes and it's got a compressor wheel on the intake side and the way this works is that uh, your turbocharger uses the exhaust gases that exit your engine through your ex uh, exhaust manifold and, to, and it uses those to turn the turbine and by turning the turbine it turns the, the connecting shaft and as a result you turn your compressor wheel and then you compress the, the air the fresh air that's coming through your air filter box and it compresses that and creates boost for your engine. Now since your turbocharger is dealing with uh, exhaust gases and it's usually right next to your exhaust manifold and also the turning of this uh, the shaft it creates a lot of heat. Now you need to first be able to cool this down a lot of times they use engine coolant to cool this uh, turbocharger down and also since this shaft is going to be turning inside of uh, bearings you're going to have to supply pressurized engine oil to this turbocharger so that you know you don't damage the shaft and things can run smoothly also you're going to have two seals at the end of the shafts on both sides of the exhaust side and the intake side that keep the oil in and again you're going to have a supply coolant line and a return line same thing for your pressurized oil you're going to have supply oil and a return oil line. So after the air that's coming uh, from your air filter box gets compressed by your compressor wheel, the, as a result of the compression of the air, you're going to be heating up the air. And when you heat up air, the air molecules are going to occupy a larger space because that's just how it is. You know, whenever you heat things up, they expand. So there's a need to compress this, compress the air before you send it to your intake manifold and your engine. And uh, here's where an uh, intercooler comes in place. It works a lot like your radiator. It's usually located in front of your uh, in front of your car so that when you're driving the air that's ru rushing by can cool the intercooler down and as a result you, you cool down the air, the compressed air that's coming from your compressor wheel before you send it to your engine. Right, there are two other main components of most turbocharging systems. Well, first one is the waste gate. Now since a lot of turbos have been fitted onto small four cylinder engines, your, the exhaust gases that come out of these small engines don't have enough force to turn the turbine at low RPMs and therefore they can't really um, create boost unless you make this turbine really small and then these at low RPMs even the exhaust gases at those RPMs can turn the turbine and create boost on this side. Now there's a problem with having small turbines and that is that you can at higher RPMs you can spin this thing really really fast and if it spins too fast it's going to create too much boost that a small four cylinder engine can't handle and it could potentially damage your engine or other components on this side. So what they came up with was a waste gate and what this does is uh, it, it opens a valve after the boost reaches a certain predetermined uh, limit and these are usually vacuum operated and what when it opens this valve it opens up this passageway that lets some exhaust gases bypass your turbine and get around your turbine and exit through your exhaust pipe. Therefore, you know, you limit the speed that this turbine can turn. As a result, you limit the amount of boost that you can create and you won't run the risk of damaging your engine. All right, the second component we need to talk about is your blow-off valve. Now, when you're driving a turbocharged car and you let your foot off the gas pedal, your throttle plate is going to close but exhaust gases aren't going to stop coming out of your engine through your exhaust manifold and turning this turbine. As a result, you're going to still going to have this compressor wheel turn and create boost on this side even though your throttle plate is closed. Now if you don't have a ventilation system for this, this boost is going to damage something here, either your intercooler, the connectors, or maybe a seal somewhere, and you're going to have a boost leak. And the job of the blow-off valve is to do just uh, that, to ventilate the system once you let your foot off the gas pedal and this throttle plate closes. It's usually vacuum operated and it opens up this valve at a predetermined uh, boost pressure 
and it lets some of that extra boost exit out so that it doesn't damage the system on the side. All right, now let's get on to me showing you how the different parts actually look like on, in real life. As you can see, we got a 1.8 liter Volkswagen turbocharged engine here. And here's a look at our turbocharger. It's this guy right down here. Here's our exhaust manifold. Uh, exhaust gases enter through here. It's uh, spin our turbine and exit through this tailpipe, uh, exhaust pipe, and out the back through our tailpipe. And here's a look at our air filter box. It's right here. This is the intake tube for the turbocharger. It wraps around here and meets up with our turbocharger right down here. You guys are probably not going to be able to see it. But, uh, but yeah. And here's a look at our, uh, this is an uh, oil line, one of the oil lines, I believe. And this other one is a coolant line down here. All right, so next I'm going to raise the car and show you the pump piping that comes out of the turbocharger and runs down here to our intercooler there. Also see if I can get a shot of the wastegate, but I uh, probably won't be able to. It's kind of hidden down there, but we'll see. All right, so now we're underneath the car and uh, this is the hose that comes out of our turbo. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you the wastegate or any part of the turbo for that matter because it's hidden behind all these hoses up there. But this is the hose that comes out of our turbo that carries boosts from our turbocharger to our intake manifold, our intercooler then onto our intake manifold. But here's a look at our blow off valve, it's that guy right here. There's a vacuum line that operates it and on the back of this blow off valve there's another hose that you guys are not going to be able to see but it takes, it wraps around towards, goes towards the top of the engine. And before we go any further, here's a, this is, there's some oil leaking here now. It's probably the seal on our uh, shaft on the compressor wheel side of our turbocharger that's leaking a little bit. I've heard you know some leaking is okay. Now I don't know if this is considered okay amount of leaking or this is excessive but uh, as you can see we got some leaks here. I've never seen any uh, oil drips underneath this spot so I'm assuming it's not too bad and it's somewhat acceptable. But anyway the boost that comes out of our turbo travels here down here through this pipe underneath our uh, radiator and it travels to the other side to our intercooler. So now we're looking in from the driver's side. There's the piping underneath our radiator that carries the boost from our turbocharger. It wraps around here, goes up here to our intercooler. And here's our intercooler placed in front of the vehicle and looks pretty much like a radiator. And here's a look at the top of our intercooler and that hose from the top of the intercooler comes out to our throttle body right here onto our intake and into our engine. All right, forget here's the, the air hose that comes from our blow off valve right down there. That's the side that goes to our blow off valve. And as our blow off valve opens, the pressurized air enters this hose and this hose is connected to this top air hose, the, the main one that comes from our air filter box. And since on this side, this is open to atmospheric pressure. And as, it, as the pressurized air after the compressor goes from a high pressure area to a low pressure area, it probably cools down as it expands and also uh, then again since it's already filtered it's ready to be back through our turbocharger. And there you have it folks. Now that was a walk through a very basic uh, turbocharging system but uh, the whole purpose of this video was to just familiarize people with how a turbocharger works and what are the different components that make up the system. Now what I'm going to be doing in a couple of days is to make a video on how you can make a homemade boost leak tester or a boost leak detector and a boost leak is basically if you ever develop a, a leak anywhere after your compressor wheel from your turbocharger through all the different hoses and the piping and your intercooler all the way back up to the throttle body, you're going to be losing compressed air and you're going to experience a great decrease in power. You're going to have a lack of power when you're driving your turbocharged vehicle. And if you, may, if you have your own boost leak tester, you can find that leak and repair it and then be back on the road driving your fast turbocharged car again with, uh, in no time. So if you want to see that video, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please give this one a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.